Ever since I moved into this warehouse about two years ago, I've had this idea about building a kiln, and not just any kiln. I wanted to find a convenience store refrigerator, you know, one of those two to three door jobs where they put all the soda pops in, and I wanted to build a kiln out of that, because that would have been big enough that I could make a four to six foot slab, and I could dry that over six months or so for my own personal work. I could also dry all my bowls and stuff like that, but, in that kind of setup with the glass doors, I would invest enough money to maybe have an, a little uh, Raspberry Pi controlled thermometer where light bulbs of different wattages could go off to keep the temperature at a certain uh, setting, working with a hygrometer. It's a very inexpensive setup to make a really nice kiln, plus I thought it would be a really cool display. In fact, when I built my storage wall where I am storing my air dried stuff, which is taking four, five, six years to dry out, uh, I left a just enough space for the most common size of those convenience store refrigerators. But two years has gone by, I still haven't found one. So instead, to get me by until I find my dream one, I am going to build a very inexpensive, simple kiln out of an old freezer. A stand-up freezer I got off of Craigslist. So that's what we're going to be doing today, is building a temporary kiln so I can dry bowls and stuff like that for this Christmas season, and maybe I can get all this box uh, stock fully dried out so I can start making boxes. So, welcome to Worth the Effort Woodworking as we discuss making a refrigerator kiln. Now making a kiln out of a freezer is nothing new. Wood turners have been doing it a long time. Why do we use freezers? Because uh, around here they're practically free. I got this one on Craigslist. This one actually still works, uh, but you can find ones that don't work uh, at repair shops, uh, Craigslist, just on the side of the road a lot of times. And uh, even in my town you can, can go out the dump and find uh, stuff that people have dropped off before it gets crunched up. No big deal. They're, they are free if you want them. Uh, the key thing is you want to find either a solid refrigerator or a solid freezer. Don't get the freezer-refrigerator combo because, hey, if you're going to build it, why, might as well build one with the most space. And I, I try to get a taller one, but this is the only one I could find. The other thing is you want to have shelving that is flows air. You don't want solid plastic shelving like you see a lot of times in modern-day ones. Get ones with wire shelvings if you can. Uh, well, it's actually a necessity. Uh, the other thing is you're going to need a heat source and a lot of people use those kind of ceramic pads that you use in uh, uh, lizard aquariums, whatever they call those things. Some people, you can even buy the little tiny fans with the heaters in them already. I'm just going to use what's traditionally used as a light bulb. Uh, I bought a little wall hanging sconce, uh, an outdoor wall hanging sconce uh, for uh, right under $6 at the Blue Big Box store. And I chose an outdoor version simply because uh, water will be dripping and I don't want water to be hitting the bulb uh, and causing it to crack and I wouldn't know about it. Uh, I'm starting out with 40 watt bulbs. As it dries out, you increase to 60, 75, 100 watts. And I did make sure that this little receptacle could go up to 100 watts. And you need some kind of power source to power it. I just bought a cheap uh, extension cord, I'll cut off the end and wire that thing up and to turn it on I'll plug it in, to turn it off I'll unplug it. I'm not the best thing in the world but I'm going low buck here until I find my dream machine. Now you are going to have to cut holes in the side um, strategically and I bought a PVC pipe to kind of insulate those holes because you don't want water coming up in underneath it. You just want the water to escape out and I want to be able to plug it up if I want to so I can restrict it to increase the moisture content in here so it gradually lowers down and whatnot. And to cut those holes, I had an old door cutting hole jig for doorknobs and locks and stuff like that. I'm just going to use the two inch hole cutter from that one and that will precisely fit a two inch pipe. So very inexpensive. I want to say I've spent five, two, uh, I spent a good 12, 15 bucks on all of this this stuff right here, but we are talking low dollar for a working kiln. So let real quickly let's talk about convection and my reasoning how I'm going to cut the holes in this particular example. Now this style kiln is what they call a convection style kiln in which we are using the fact that hot air rises in a gravity environment, it won't work in space. In a gravity environment, hot less dense air rises and cooler more dense air falls down and that motion 
uh, creates the airflow that we need. So, the idea is that we will locate the light source, the heat source, the light bulb, down low, and the heat will rise up and exhaust out the top. But, this is looking at the refrigerator on, uh, from the front with the different shelves. That doesn't tell the whole story. Because the heat isn't going to just rise straight up. And we actually need it to kind of circulate around. Because there's going to be times, especially when you just start drying your green wood, that you don't want all the moisture to escape. You want to slow it down so you want to maintain it in there. And just having heat sitting on top because it rose up is not going to accomplish that. We want airflow. We want to control the moisture content. For that reason, if this is the side of the freezer... That's the back of it. What I want to do is put that heat source at the back of it, along that wall. And then I'm going to put the air intake, I'm going to cut a couple holes towards the front. And that way, the air will come in and it will go back towards the back where the heat source is because there's going to be a vacuum there because this air right here has started rising up. And that will create, the, initiate the phenomenon of the circulation. This is kind of like radiators work in big buildings. On the top, I'm actually going to, I had thought I was going to put a vent on the top, but I have a grill there with a lot of metal and I don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to put a hole in the top of the door right there. And that will allow me to cap it off and put a smaller hole if I want to to reduce the airflow coming out of it, but as the air cools down or escapes, it's going to start this flowing action. So on the inside of the freezer, even though the door is closed, it will be circulating the air, getting lots of movement and causing the stuff to dry evenly. That's the goal. So let's grab our whole soil and start making a mess. Okay, there we go. Less than 50 bucks, free freezer, and we had the potential of having our very own kiln. Imagine that, being able to go out and get whatever species of wood you want, doing a re little research on how to dry it, stick it in your own kiln, and then, I mean, you could get a small slab in here that make a great small tabletop out of solid wood, or Get a slab and make one box out of that at a later date. So all your color matches, you can get grain matching. You have so much more control when you can go get the wood yourself. What we have right here is I put in two air inlets on the bottom. It's just two inch PVC. And I kind of squeeze them between two couplings to lock it all together. And I did the same for the top back here. I also put a cap that I can put on there. I'll probably drill a hole some size up there to really restrict the air. Though... With as few little air inlets I have, I probably will have to add more in the future because this might be a little bit too restrictive. But it's fairly easy to do, and it's easier to add holes and take them away. So I figured this would be a good way to start out. Uh, we have our outdoor lamp on back. I still need to put some caulk in the hole just so that the cable doesn't rough up on that uh, metal edge. But other than that, let's see if it works. All right. So I have a 40 wallet bulb in there right now. And the idea is that's what I would start out with for a few weeks. And then I'd step up to 60, 75, and eventually end at 100 watt with the ultimate goal being to get my temperature gauge up above 125 for a little while. That will guarantee I kill all the bugs and their eggs on these whatever bowls I want to turn. Now me personally, 
I'm probably going to fill this bottom section up and leave the wood there for three to four months to fully dry out. And that'll be the really thick blanks that I used to make boxes. Yeah, I know you can rough out a box and put them end to end and dry them just as quickly as a fall, but it kind of limits you whatever design you roughed out. And I never know what I want to make six months in the future. So I just like to start out with a solid block of wood. That's why I've been drying bowls stuff in the air for quite a while now. Uh, the bowls, man, I could probably get 30, 45 bowls in here very easily and really stuff it in so there's very little air in there to get the maximum effect effective drying for there. So I'm kind of excited about this. Imagine being able to rough out a bowl and then be finished turn it a month later to make some money on it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned a little bit. Hey, visit our website, WorthEffort.com. I have a lot of new swag coming out. We have three of these t-shirts designs which are based off my charcoal drawings that you've seen in other videos. And I'll probably do a new uh, artwork piece once a month for quite a while now to develop the inventory. And I've started carrying some nice little embroidered hats too. Plus we got shop made tools and all the artwork that you see, the bowls that you see me talking about. Hey, that's how I'm ironing my limiting is selling wooden bowls and boxes and containers. So visit worththeeffort.com. And remember, one last thing. It is always worth the effort to learn, create, and share your ideas with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.